Hello, my name is James and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. Bench power supplies are an incredibly useful tool. Advanced supplies like the 9140 that BK Precision sent us have advanced functions. In this episode, we look at functions like slew rate limiting, power sequencing, and something called programmable list. With that, let's go measure. First up, let's take a look at its basic specs. The BK Precision 9140 is a triple output supply with 100 watts that can be combined for a max output of 300 watts. The 9140 does up to 32 volt and 8 amps on each channel. The 9141 can do 60 volt but only 4 amps. These channels can be series or paralleled for up to 180 volt or 24 amps depending on the model. On the back are screw terminals with outputs and remote sensing inputs along with three digital I.O. signals. For remote programming, all models come with a LAN and USB port. There is an additional model that adds GPIB. On the front is a bright and crisp LCD display that can display all the channels in a summary, details on individual channels, and graphs. The USB port allows for transferring configurations, logging data, and a feature called list mode. More on that later. Navigating the menus is straightforward, and the keypad and the knob are intuitive to use. Each channel has its own output control and a main control for all channels. On the front, the output terminals support standard banana plugs, plugs with a sheath, and spade lug type connectors. BK Precision does offer a LabVIEW-based tool with the free runtime. It duplicates most, if not all, of the controls. This software definitely shows that there is a robust programming interface. The unit itself is about 8 by 3 by 13 inches and only weighs 11 pounds. It is very lightweight and compact, so obviously a switching base supply. Models start at 1,850 US dollars. Overall, 300 watts in this size with the features that it has makes the 9140 a very competitive supply in its class. Since the box is a little unassuming, let's take a look at some of the cool things that it can do. So one minor thing to note is that I really like that all three of the outputs have the same capabilities. They are equally matched. The channels can be combined in series for higher voltage or in parallel for higher current. Just FYI, setting the mode in the menu only changes the UI. You still have to externally wire up the channels. Several protection modes are available as well. You can set a max voltage or current that will cause the supply to shut down the channel. For example, I set a super low 250 milliamp limit, which at this voltage causes the channel to almost immediately disable. Remember those screw terminals on the back from like 30 seconds ago? They had sense inputs. These inputs allow the channel to measure the voltage at the end of the cables and then compensate for the loss. So in this case, I'm using these ridiculously small wires to connect a power resistor, which draws about one amp. The left DMM measures the voltage at the resistor and the right DMM measures directly at the supply output. I'm not sure, but I don't think you're supposed to use the back and the front outputs at the same time. Now, in this case, we're only using the front to measure voltage. All of the current is coming out of the back, so I think for now, we're going to be okay. So if you subtract the two DMMs, there is about a 200 millivolt loss across the cable. After I turn the channel off, enable the remote sense function, now we can see that the supply outputs 5.18 volts and our device under test sees the more proper 4.95 volts. When you look at the data sheet, all of the voltages are listed as positive, but for my Mega 2E project, I need a negative 12 volt supply. Since the outputs are isolated, just reverse the leads and suddenly you get a negative 12 volt output. Okay, so the supply does all the basic things we would expect. Now let's take a look at some of the more advanced functions that put it into a different class. When you turn on a bench power supply, it generally turns on very quickly with no overshoot. The 9140 is no exception. I'll show you in just a minute. However, real world power supplies, like when you design a switch mode power circuit, they're not usually that fast and they sometimes have a little bit of overshoot. So there is a way to do both of those things with the 9140. As an example, at 320 millivolts per millisecond, we see a clean edge with no overshoot. Now let's compare that to a slower 32 millivolt per millisecond slew rate. On the scope, we can see that the slew rate definitely slows down. So I see using that feature to simulate the real world turn on of a switch mode circuit. The next feature is power on sequencing. Obviously you can couple the channels together so that turning on one turns on the others. 
Coming back to that Mega 2E project, it has three voltage rails. One of the rails, the 5 volt rail, needs to turn on last. So in the channel menus, I add a on time delay for the plus 12 and plus 5 volt supplies. Now when we turn them all on, the device under test beeps, and the scope shows us that they turned on in order. The list mode is another sequencing feature. It lets you define a table of up to 100 entries with different set points for the voltage and current. Each step is controlled by a timer, one of the digital IOs, or both. They can also generate trigger signals for other equipment. When the list runs, it sets the limits in sequence, resulting in a waveform like this one. While you can edit the table with the front panel, I found using the free PC software made this process way more manageable. Using the on-time delays, it should be possible to turn on things like FPGAs where you have to turn on the power rails in a specific sequence. By combining the slew rate limiter and the list mode, you can simulate how a real-world circuit would turn on. I think all of these features together are what set this class of power supply apart from a simple one with just simple controls. Visit the Element 14 community to find show notes with links to the BK Precision 9140 Bench Power Supply. Remember, that is the best place to ask me questions because I'm more likely to see and be able to answer them over there. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it's time for me to get back to slew rate limited power sequencing on my electronics workbench.